Hey everyone, this is Darkfire Slide here with episode 4 of our Europa Universalis 4 Kingdoms of the East campaign as Ming, with Captain Birdseye playing as Bengal. Ah, let's get this started. <laughs> We've lost the conquest Cassus Belly against Oirat. Did we lose a claim that quickly? Like, I feel like we just... No, we still have one. We lost something. Weird. Oh my god, we only need 7,000 more men. That's like two years. And we'll be back to normal. Of course, you know, these rebel factions are going to rise up and just kill all my troops. But <laughs> Beside the point. The details. Peasants are getting ornery again. Damn peasants. We want to play Xbox. Ooh. Don't tax us anymore. <laughs> we got GTA 5 first. <laughs> PC Gamer released an article recently talking about the whole PC Master Race thing and. Who did? Uh, PC Gamer did. Oh. <laughs> saying how, like, I guess rude of us to say that. Because we're basically, like, calling ourselves Nazis by saying we're the Master Race. Like. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's true. I'm like, I personally like have always just seen it as like a joke and calling calling them peasants because I feel like I feel like to a degree if you're playing on a console you're missing out on a better gaming experience objectively because of the diff the differences in frame rate and the options for mods. Um, with the exception of exclusives, however, on the other hand, another really good argument I've always kept in mind when I consider like consoles and PCs is that. Um, you, you know everything. Everything is gonna work on a console, basically. It's you know fit the spec. But I don't know. If you if you're willing to pay a little bit of extra money, you can get a decent gaming PC, and you know versus a console. And you, you, I, I feel like you can do a lot more with a PC because you know with a PC you can also do stuff like work and make YouTube videos. Last Actually, time. make progress. Yeah, last time I checked, you couldn't make. YouTube videos on a console, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can do that now. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. You know, good for them. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> new social media dealies on. Yeah, it's true. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I th so I think I am going to be able to diplomatically vassalize Shenhui, and from there it's just a matter of diplomatically annexing them, so that's pretty exciting. <laughs> Very cool. This is like, like, this is all new for me, like I've never done any of this before. I, f I played as Japan, successfully, made it to the end of the game, uh, played as Bengal, got halfway through, formed Hindustan, and then decided to do something else, I don't remember what. Lose diplo power, lose trade power. We make some money off trade, so I guess we'll just take the diplo power hit. Because let's be honest, diplo power is not that useful. I'm waiting for somebody to come out someday on like maybe like the the paradox forums or maybe one of the uh, YouTubers I watch should come out and say, guys, diplo power is actually OP. <laughs> What? Oh, what a day that'd be. <laughs> Learn little, how wrong we are. Or, or maybe paradoxical patch it's alike. Like, like diplomatic annexation costs as much as, uh... Ad, or, uh, admin coring. <laughs> Damn it! Well. <laughs> we just felt like that was too easy to do. They're not wrong. I mean, it's really easy to vassalize people, especially if you're a stronger nation. You just kind of walk in, beat everyone up, and say, Hey, you're ours now. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Man, I, I hope I can improve the number of diplomatic relations I get. I, I don't think there's actually a way I can do it without, like, you know, building that... The, the embassy building. I think that's, like, Tech 5? Diplo... We're going down the Diplo tree. Oh, the idea uh, group for that. Yeah, yeah, I could do that too. Um, yeah, that really sucks. I start out with, uh, let's see how much I have. Should have like three or four, right? Yeah, I've got four. Nice. 
Well, we're a celestial empire. Right. So holy. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Lol. A string of terrible leaders, one after the other. <laughs> oh yeah. And the best part is since we don't have any power projection, if my legitimacy goes down, it's just well, GG. I don't have a way to raise it really, aside from just killing people and getting prestige. <laughs> And royal marriages. Yeah. But if I sign too many royal marriages, it's gonna cost too many uh diplomatic relations. So really just not a good situation to be in. I keep checking my advisors hoping to see a uh <laughs> like a diplo advisor to come in that isn't like, you know, one of the plus two. <laughs> Who, who has money for that in, like, f you know, in the first ten years of the game? Like, yeah. I'm supposedly... that much to burn. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm supposedly number one in the world and I don't have money for it, so I don't know. But then again, scoring's weird. Try right, dive yet. Just stare at our army, our glorious army. It's like four times the size of yours. Let's see, improve relations of plus 34, so I can get like 60 more out of that. Um, it, yeah, I'm going to be able to do it in a couple of years. So that's really cool, actually. Shenhui, he will become part of our... The Holy Patrimony! Of Ming. Oh, I don't want those. Let's do Asian longbows. Those are, those actually look really good. And then East Asian Archer Cavalry I'm okay with. I always go offensive because I feel like I'm always the one starting wars. So... It's just my own personal military no theory, I guess. Yeah. I'm I'm wary, of course, of what Oirat could become, or Chagatai, or Yarkand, even. Even. I'm just gonna add an ND on the end of everything that has an N. Why not? Makes everything more fun. <laughs> Minged. So yeah, just kind of waiting for stuff to happen now, really. Um, some, you know, sometimes when you're playing at speed too, like not a whole lot is happening, but it, it'll get there. You know, we'll, we'll start wars. Oh yeah. If nothing else, like like if I'm seriously not allowed to have rivals the whole game, that's actually kind of distressing. <laughs> No one's in your range yet. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> not even like uh, even Oirat is like not even mentioned. Come on, guys, get on my level. <laughs> Being in a nutshell. Well, it's weird because combined with uh, Mongolia, who is their vassal, and their ally Korchin and Bariasia, they could seriously just kick my ass right now. Actually. Mm. They haven't, because for some reason, they feel threatened by me now. Who? Uh, or Red. No. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Yeah, really, my long-term goal is, like, I don't have to expand that much, because I'm already big. Um, but I don't, I don't know about you. Are, you. are you going for the whole, like, trying to take over India thing? Yeah, probably. Good news, like, Gonna be one of my big goals. Yeah, just, uh... Remember when you form Hindustan, it's like... You get claims on all the territory, so it's like... You gotta make sure 
that you're in a position to actually make use of that. Because I did that as Hidden Newsstan, not realizing it did that. And so I get all these claims, and then like 20 years later, they're gone. Yeah, definitely gonna try to be prepared for that. Yeah, unfortunately, if somebody else claims the title first, it's like, ugh. Yeah. I got fortunate, I guess, in that literally every other, like, nation got, like, collapsed. <laughs> like, Bamanese got reduced to one province, Vagina Gar ceased to exist. Wow. There was one other power, I don't know if they're alive in our game. Wasn't Jaffna... Oh, it was Majirai, the the one province miner at the very bottom. They they became really big. They like, like took most of where Vagina Gar is right now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> huh. the, the AI in this game are a bunch of jackals. They pounce on that shit. How long does uh? I don't doubt it. <laughs> How long does this last? It doesn't say. I guess it just lasts till the end of the game. Yeah. What? Uh, enforcing our heritage. <laughs> the missionary strength oh. bonus. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, I'm waiting for it, right? Like, um, I've got all this, like, rebel hype. From from the wiki, mostly. Oh, repairing the Great Wall. We certainly have the ducats to do that. 150? No problem. 25 free army tradition, basically. Sweet. I'm really cool with that. Oh no, man! Not Manipur. <laughs> I still need to go and do like a Moldavian campaign, but I, I don't think I'm gonna record it because I tried to do that and it was a disaster because like we fi I finally got the war I needed with uh, Hungary and, and you know with Poland there and I captured like three provinces I had claims on and Poland didn't give me a single one of them so wow. I'm just I'm just like this war is probably not going to happen again for a long time and so therefore I'm not going to get any territory anytime soon and then Poland will become the Commonwealth, and it'll be too late to declare independence. And Who are you playing as? Uh, Moldavia. Oh. Little, little march underneath Poland. It, it's so hard, because, like, there's nobody around you you can really ally with. Everyone else that, you, that would like you because of your religion just gets sucked up by the Ottomans. You know, the Serbs, yeah. Bosni Bosnians even. Just get sucked up. And after that happens, you have nobody left to sign royal marriages with except Poland. <laughs> and they only like you because they're your overlord. Yeah. It's just messy. Yeah, it's it's not clean. It's, uh, like, Wallachia and Moldavia both are considered the hardest teams in the game to play. Even, even compared to some of the people around here. And I, I guess it's just because of the existence of the Ottomans. Like... Of course, it's my personal opinion that the Ottomans are just basically easy mode. <laughs> like, yeah, hard to go wrong with them. Yeah, that that in France and S Spain, it's weird. They list Spain as like the first option. Like, hey, this is like the easiest team to play, but like they have the most to like do. I feel like, like, cause yeah, they've got all that land, but you have to like deal with colonies if you want to do well as Spain. Like they're not—they're not like crucial to your to your success or anything, but like they're one of the you know best teams uh, poised to do that. And so if you don't have, you know, if you've never done that before, you're gonna—it's like a lot of wasted potential. But like France, it's just like oh, you just go reconquest all these people who are your vassals or diplomatically annex them. It's not that bad. And then the Ottomans, it's like oh, look at all these two province nations that I have cores on, reconquest. <laughs> or infinite weaker than you. Yep. And like no amount of like alliances on that end are ever gonna be able to do anything. Like, like the only possible thing that can like stop you basically is like either if Austria or Poland gets involved, you know, if or if Hungary gets some strong allies. But even then, the the AI isn't programmed to be like, all right, we have France as an ally, so we're gonna charge you. 
So I don't know. That, that could be something they could include. Just like, because I think I think the AI like considers like what like your current army is. So they so they look at that, and that's that's why they jump on nations when they're getting like eaten up, basically. They're like, look, we stand a chance now! Hooray! We can do this. <laughs> oh my god, we finally stopped reinforcing. We're actually getting manpower back now. Woo! There will be much celebration in the streets of Ming. All, all of Ming will have celebrations in the streets. <laughs> King Zhao is a great province name. That just sounds like a, you know, a restaurant. <laughs> not, not to be racist, not to be racist or anything, but like King Chow, I'd, I'd like sounds like I would go there. <laughs> well, I'd go there. <laughs> so many good names over here. Oh, I know. It's, it's fantastic. Oh my God, Diviet, really? Guess who has increased now? coring costs? Uh, really? Our traditions. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> it means we're historical assholes. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think they're like the only people who have that too. All right. Well, I know who's definitely Can on you my be list. Allies with them. <laughs> I don't know, like, one of my missions is to just, like, completely, like, annex them, so I guess my plan is to just di start diplomatically annexing everyone along this, uh, area here. Sounds legit. Chinese, known for their ultimate diplomacy. I don't know what the Chinese were known for historically, I just know that, like, with what often happens in this game, they're just constantly plagued by civil wars. Like, like it's basically the HRE of... Asia. Uh, that's, that's grossly oversimplifying it, of course, but... Yeah, but... Basically. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought it was funny that the AI likes to ally with people who literally can't even reach their provinces. <laughs> like, what's, what's... It's like you're locked in. Yeah, like, what's the point? <laughs> Helping. <laughs> Who? <laughs> what? <sighs> or the super worldly powers allying up with a single province? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if I were to ally with like Sukatai down here, like they're they're a vassal of Ayutthaya, of course. But <laughs> just if I were to form an alliance with them, it's like like. I know I abuse that, like, like it seems like the Holy Roman strategy, if I, if I may, it's just, just like every game I always end up just ally with France, ally with the Commonwealth, turn on both of them and just beat them into submission, basically. <laughs> oh, we're at, we're at plus 185, or we're at, oh, oh, or we're at is fighting Chagatai. Now, I don't have any manpower, but this does seem like an appropriate time to intervene. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna go intervene in the war. Go fight Oirat and all their vassals. Now that we have Tech 3. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wh which province doesn't have a Earth Rampart? I didn't even think there was a province that had that. Is it, uh, is it these guys? Yep, I have one province. No, they have it too. What? What's going on? Why does it say that I can build that? Who... Who doesn't have a fort? Oh my... Good golly gosh, there's one teeny tiny little province down here that doesn't have one. It's uh, th but it's a three base tax. So, sure. Just the most... Like, I couldn't even point it out to you, it's so infinitesimally small. Oh boy, I can't wait to go fighting in these deserts. Not something I thought I'd say, like ever say. Like in most games, like ah, oh, fighting in the desert sucks. It's like, whoa, it's not in this game. Oh no, desert is basically the best thing you could ever hope for.
Now, Chagatai is allied with Kazan, interestingly enough, so if Kazan can actually get over here and help, it's gonna be a nasty war. In fact, Chagatai is actually beating Oirat. <laughs> so we're just gonna join in on the fun, really. It's our, it's our plan here. Alright, um, Shenhui is now at 191. Offer vassalization. They accepted! Hooray! I have a diplomatic vassal now. Oh, shouldn't we? Yep. They are now nice. My, they are now my vassal. And so in 10 years, I will be able to annex them. <laughs> uh, only a hundred, or sorry, a costly 140 diplo power. <sighs> no, no. For five provinces and a total of like, wow, that's a, it's like, jeez, that's like 14 base tax. It's actually really good. For 140 diplo, that much base tax. Huh? And look at all the people I start being connected to. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. I suppose next would be to beat up Tibet after this war with Oirat. Just go beat on Tibet huh? for a bit and vassalize them. Well, after I annex uh, Shenwei. Rebel Uprising, um, Buddhist Zealots, uh, probably should do something. I don't know, I, another six years. Anyway, uh, we are reaching our time limit, um, which is fortunate because we're just on the cusp of war, so next time should be pretty explosive. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and make sure to tune in next time.